Good evening. In the last few moments, the authorities in the U.S. say that two bodies have now been recovered following the Baltimore Bridge collapse yesterday. Investigators have also found the data recorder from the ship that crashed into the bridge. They are hoping it will explain why the vessel lost power soon after leaving the city's port. Six maintenance workers who fell into the water when the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed are all presumed dead. Our North America correspondent Gary O'Donoghue joins us now. From the local authorities that at about 10 o'clock this morning, Sophie, they found a red pickup truck under the central span of where the bridge was in the water. And they're confirming and releasing the names of two people uh, who were in that red pickup truck. They were part of that construction crew, as we know, that were on the bridge at the time filling potholes. And despite the, the Mayday warning from the ship uh, and the action of the authorities to try and prevent other vehicles from getting onto the bridge, these people were already on the bridge. And sadly, we now know they've lost their lives. It's been an intense day here, an intense day of searching, an intense day of discussion about what to do next and the effect on Baltimore and the United States more generally. Let's take a look now uh, about how the events did unfold. Throughout the day, the gruesome task of recovering the bodies of those who died has continued as their identities have begun to emerge. Two names have so far been released. Miguel Luna was from El Salvador and a father of three. And Maynard Suazo was from Honduras. His brother Martin spoke outside the family home. He became a fundamental pillar of our family, a bastion so others could travel over there and get visas and everything. He was a driving force for all of us. They had been working the night shift fixing potholes on the bridge when authorities were alerted the ship was veering off course. Yeah, if we can stop traffic, just make sure no one's on the bridge right now. Uh, I'm not sure where uh, if there's a crew out there. We might want to notify whoever the foreman is, see if we can get them off the bridge temporarily. But the ship hit just moments later. 213 dispatch, the whole bridge just fell down. Start, start, whoever, everybody, the whole bridge just collapsed. Thoughts have also now turned to the process of how best to remove the ship and clear the channel. I think the main challenge here is, as you can see by the um, imagery on scene, is removing that, those large trusses and steel members um, off the bow of the ship. Once that happens, uh, we'll have the underwater survey complete in terms of um, how that vessel is uh, connected to the bridge pier um, there. But I think once that's done, I think the salvers will be ready to uh, do the necessary actions to refloat that vessel and remove it. To achieve all that, the Navy is supplying heavy lift cranes to clear the river and the submerged sections of the bridge. Meanwhile, at least two dozen investigators have been on the ship securing its data recorder and have attempted to reassure the public that the containers on board aren't posing a threat to public health. Up close like this, you can see the sheer scale of the problem facing the investigators. Not only are they trying to find those who lost their lives in these frigid waters, in these choppy and rainy conditions, but also in terms of the boat, moving it and getting the bridge off it is a huge job. Local and national officials have vowed to protect the incomes of around 15,000 workers at the port, which is also crucial to 140,000 jobs in the wider region. This is an important port for both imports and exports, and it's America's largest vehicle handling port, which is important not only for car imports and exports, but also for farm equipment. In the coming months, many questions will be asked about the safety record of the Dali and the construction of the Key Bridge itself. Gary O'Donoghue, BBC News, Baltimore. Let's talk to our New York business correspondent, Michelle Fleury. It is a major port in the United States, a major bridge now blocking it. What is the economic impact likely to be? Yeah, as you say, it is a, a big port. It's not the largest in the country, but when it comes to the volume of shipments, certainly of cars and small trucks, it is substantial and significant. 
Because of that, some car makers will have to move or perhaps make alternative arrangements. They could try and go, for example, to the ports near here in New York, New Jersey, and there's also Virginia. Car makers I've already spoken to have said that they have secured alternative routes, but I think there isn't a doubt that for some, it might mean that the products, these goods that are being shipped, will be further from their final destination. And of course, that can push up the cost. Now, we've been talking about maritime trade. There is also the road aspect to all of this. Warehousing and truck deliveries will also be affected. Some $28 billion worth of goods moved across that bridge every year. So that will now have to find alternative methods to kind of get to their final destination. It can be anything from a toothbrush, from a, a cup, you know, all of these kind of household goods now have to travel that bit further. It comes at a time when we're already seeing disruptions. In the Red Sea, you've got Houthi attacks uh, on commercial vessels. And in the Panama Canal, which I recently visited, there is a drought. And so although we expect the fallout, at least the economic fallout, from this very dramatic bridge collapse to be temporary, it's fair to say that it adds another layer of disruption to already stressed supply chains.